um, this theme of birth and death, I wanted to say a little bit about it um, and talk about the kind of larger frame for the month, um, which basically I've been thinking be interesting to kind of explore this topic of birth and death, which is really central, you know, in the Buddhist contemplative tradition. I think it's central in every contemplative tradition. I mean, really, what's the point of doing this? if we're not exploring these kind of deep questions about our existence um, and non-existence. So, um, but in the, in the Buddhist contemplative tradition, there have been multiple ways of looking at birth and death that have developed and evolved. And what I'd like to do over the month is kind of almost retrace the evolution of Buddhism and its exploration of birth and death which are also different perspectives on birth and death, different ways of, of working with it and understanding it. Um, and there are also different realizations uh, about birth and death, different ways of knowing ourselves uh, in relation to our existence. And I'd like to start um, with the early Buddhist view today, which um, really in a way is about seeing birth and death as the cause of our suffering, the cause of dukkha. You know, if we weren't born, we wouldn't be able to suffer, right? <laughs> presumably, I don't know what it would be like to not be born, <laughs> but uh, presumably um, it's not like this. Um, and there's that early story of the, of the Buddha um, and, and how he got into practice and what kind of drove him to become a contemplative. And that was that he saw birth and death. Um, he saw old age and he saw sickness. He saw like the human condition basically and more clearly than he'd seen before. He'd been kind of um, protected. He had like helicopter parents or something that were like protecting him from the world. And then he saw the world and he said, oh shit, this also applies to me. And given this, you know, what do I do? What do I do with this? Uh, this knowledge, this understanding that I'm going to die and that I'm going to get old and sick and suffer. Um, and so the early Buddhist response to that, which was a response to figuring out also how do we escape this ceaseless round of rebirth too, because it wasn't just like, I'm going to be born and die and that's it. And this sucks. It's like, I'm going to be born and die forever. Um, because that was also the metaphysics of the time in India is that, you know, reincarnation, um, something is reborn, something uh, is born, something dies and something is reborn. So that which is reborn is also constantly stuck in this, in this loop, this endless loop of samsara. And the idea was to get out of the loop, to break the loop, to find something that wasn't um, implicated in birth and death, something that wasn't suffering, something that isn't, um, is somehow transcends that situation, but can still be realized or known. And they called, you know, the early Buddhists called that nirvana. So the idea was to break out of samsara, like a prison, you break, it's like a breakout, break out into nirvana. And um, in this nir nirvanic condition, you know, which they called the unconditioned, the unborn the undying, um, that which has never been born or could die. Um, that, in that conception, that is the experience of transcending one's own suffering um, and of becoming free of birth and death and discovering something which is free of birth and death, the unconditioned, the unborn. Um, and that's, you know, to, to, for me, that, that is a real experience. Um, and it's also overlaid with this kind of view, you know, this view, uh, an idea, this conception of what the problem is and what the solution is and how to do it all kind of comes with the early Buddhist um, orientation. And so <clears throat> today we're going to kind of explore a question, a contemplation, which for me it sort of, it, 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 it leads toward or points toward the unconditioned, um, toward nirvana. And in following weeks, um, you know, we can look at also the Mahayana and Vajrayana and maybe even the, you know, whatever today's yana is, um, today's vehicle for working with birth and death. 